Hello everybody and welcome to this Scalar training. My name is Joel Mora and I'm a technical account manager here at Scalar and I'm here to talk to you today about data manipulation techniques within the Scalar product. Data manipulation techniques can really be broken down into two different categories. There are sampling and discarding data, which we're going to talk about in this video. And then there's redaction and rewriting, which we're going to touch on in the next. Sampling and discarding is relatively straightforward, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's controlling the amount of data that goes into your account using various techniques. By the end of this video, you're going to be able to use any of these techniques to sample or discard your data. I think the easiest thing to do here will be to just get right into what the data pipeline looks like. So let's do that. So let's start in your data center. And as your applications and your servers function, it's going to be emitting logs. In this case, it's going to be writing logs to a disk. And you will have the scalar agent most likely installed on your servers. And it's going to be looking at a particular file. In this case, it's going to be var log. And the agent is going to take everything in that directory, and it's going to process that. So the way it processes it first is it's going to sample the data. So in this case, it would be like discard 20% of everything. And then once it does that, then it's going to go through the redaction step. After the reduction step, it's going to ship the data off to the scalar data center via the REST API. When the data moves from your data center into the scalar event data cloud, um, the event data cloud is just going to be picking up logs via the API. From there, it's going to go through another step, a redaction step called pre-processing or scrubbing. What that's going to do is just allow you to write a centralized set of rules that are going to rewrite the data before it's ultimately parsed. Then the parser allows you to both discard and rewrite data. Parsers are very powerful and it's going to allow you to do both. Once the data is parsed, then it's going to go to the cost management step, which allows you to have a centralized repository for all of your discard rules. From there, the data is going to be available to you to use in the scalar UI. And then you also have the option to utilize one of the many integrations such as Grafana or Google Data Studio, or just grab it at the regular REST API. So um, that's how the data pipeline works. Now let's talk a little bit about sampling. So sampling itself is relatively straightforward. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be discarding all or a percentage of a log line. There are some benefits and trade-offs to choosing to sample. The benefit to sampling is cost, and then the trade-off is that data may not be available to you if you actually need it. There are multiple mechanisms to sample, the agent, the parser, and then cost management. The majority of these are controlled with regular expression rules. Until you get into the cost management step, then you have a little bit of extra, but we're going to get into that in a bit. There are three places to sample and or discard within the product, and the following table will help you make the decision as to which one is best for your particular use case. We could discard data within the agent, the parser, and cost management, but if you need to sample data, the only place that you could do that will be within the agent. There are some serious benefits to setting your rules within the agent because data that's sampled or discarded there will not leave your data center. But the trade-off is that you will not have a place to centrally manage these rules unless you use some sort of configuration management tools. If you sample here, you will not have to pay any sort of egress costs, but you will only have access to the message field, not other fields that are attached to the data that you can get downstream. Data discarded here can be centrally managed in the parser configuration files in the UI. Parsers give you quite a bit of control over the message field, but they do incur an egress cost. You won't be charged by Scalar for data discarded here, but parsers can get complex pretty quickly, and if you have multiple parsers, it can become difficult to manage which parser configuration file is discarding which data, which is why I typically like to use discards here to clean up data before it is ultimately parsed into columns, and not to build rules that I may need to turn on on and off. This leads us to the cost management function. Cost management is the latest feature and has many benefits, including a UI where rules can be easily toggled and you can get the added benefits of the cost management feature. The trade-off here is that it does not support sampling and data will need to be egressed from your data center. So now that we've gone through the different options, let's do a demo for each. For the agent, 
what I'm gonna do is set up a simple log stream here. And what we're doing is sending um, a 200 status code, a 401, and then a 500. And then we're just repeating that over and over and over. Um, and it's not the most realistic log, but it's gonna, you'll see in a second why I've done that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna edit our agent JSON file. And um, what I'm doing is monitoring a path where this is writing to, and I'm attaching one simple attribute, which is the parser. Um, I've written sampling rules earlier, so let's just uncomment these, and then I'll talk to you about what the anatomy is here. So the first piece is the match expression, and this is a line fragment um, that we can define. So what I'm looking for is a 200 status code. The reason I have these patterns surrounding the 200 is because I don't want, is because I want to harden the pattern as to not um, false trigger if there's a 200 within like the token or the timestamp or something. I really just want to define this pattern and then I'm looking for a 200. So that's what I've done here. So we're doing this for the 200, the 500, and the 401. And then these are gonna execute sequentially. For the 200, we're setting a sampling rate of zero, meaning that all of them are gonna be discarded. For the 500, we're setting a sampling rate of one, which means all of them will be ingested or sent in this case. And for the 401, um, we're setting a sampling rate of 30%. And remember, these are floats. So all we have to do here is save. And then we can view our live till. Well, that's coming in. One thing that we can see that I set up earlier is um, one minute buckets of um, those log lines coming in. And um, what we can see is an even 30% distribution of the 401s, the 200s, and the 500s here. Now that we set the sampling rules, we should see the 200s go away, the 500s remain the same, and then the 400s be sampled. So let's take a look at this now, and um, let's just refresh this live tail. So let's take a look at our graph, and for the last three minutes, what we can see is the 500s um, likely stayed the same, the 200s are completely gone, and then the 401s are um, significantly diminished, probably around 30%. So that's an example of how to configure sampling and discarding in the agent. If you decide instead that you want to discard in the parser, here's how to do that. So if we click on any log line, and we expand it, and we select Edit Parser, we can see the parser for this. And um, I've created a parser discard rule prior to this. And then what this is going to do is it's going to discard. Um, so it's essentially the same rule that we have. So we have space, 200, space, and then any digit. So that's what we're looking for right here, essentially. Um, one thing that we have to add for the parser is because it takes into account the entire message and not just a fragment is we have to put a dot star at the beginning. That would be the only difference in our pattern. And then we add discard equals true. And since we're already discarding 200s, let's discard the 401s. Um, and then all we're gonna do is save the parser. And then we'll move back to live tail. And there we go, we can see that no more 401s are coming in. Probably don't need to verify that on the graph because you can see that uh, 401s are just no longer coming in. And then the last place that we can configure something is in the cost management page. Um, so cost management is a scalar lab. So in order to uh, work with it, uh, you have to go into scalar labs here and then you have to turn it on if it's not already on. So go to scalar labs scroll down to the cost management area, toggle it on if it's not there. Once it's on and if you have access to the billing plan, um, click billing plan here. And then now we have cost management categories. And um, I've set this one up earlier. So let's just take a look here. And what we're looking for is um, 
server level fields. Um, in this case, I'm just doing server host contains um, the name of uh, this server here. And um, it's asking for planned usage. So let's say I have a one gigabyte quota. Um, if we go over that, there's also some cost, there's also some notification functions. Um, but what we can do here are add discard filters. Um, and then what the discard filter lets you do is just add a scalar search query and anything matching that query is going to be discarded. So it'll allow you to basically have access to any field, not just the message field. Um, so in this case, I am doing status equals 500. And uh, notice it's a lot easier than defining these uh, regular expressions as well. Within the message field, you can just do status equal 500, assuming the field's parsed. Um, so we just toggle that on. If we move back here, we should see that data stopped. So in the agent, we're discarding the 200s. In the parser, we're discarding the 401s. And in cost management, we're disabling the 500s. So now we can see that there's no more data coming into this account because we've stopped it. So that is an overview of sampling and discards. My name is Joel Mora, and I'll see you in the next one.